presenter. Our next presenter yeah, that, is that's uh, good. Tim, Tim, Tim Hodgkiss, <laughs> who is shy and retiring, and, and he's, he's at the Pomfret Community School, and uh, he teaches fifth and sixth grade. And I just real quickly want to tell you a story about Tim. One time I came up to him and I had this idea, and I said, Tim, I've got this idea, and I was wondering if you would be interested, and he said, yes. I said, <laughs> but I didn't tell you the idea. He says, I don't care. I'm not afraid. Whatever it is, I want to be in. So Tim is talking about helping my students to take risks. Yeah? It's all yours, Tim. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting some of Tim's kids in November, I believe it was. Yes, and they, they, were, and the, they were quite entertaining on video. And the fifth graders were upset that everything got closed down before then. But maybe we can do something next year when it becomes normal again. I have some ideas, Tim. But go on with your Just say yes. I'll do Just it. say I'll yes. Do it. I'll do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, the biggest thing that I found out <clears throat> was, you know, start when I started teaching. Actually, it was before I started teaching, was that it's okay to fail. And it's a hard thing for anybody, especially adults or teachers, you know, to fail in front of their students. And I've done that quite a few times. In fact, I will often make a big deal out of failing, you know, just to show the students that everybody fails. Um, one of the stories I've told them was when I was a uh, Navy corpsman years and years ago, and I was learning how to suture. We didn't do it on people, we did it on oranges because we wanted to fail there and not on someone's body. And then I spent the next 20 years when I got out doing art. In fact, that's one of my pieces up there. And I really never had an art piece that I did, had, you know, that I went all the way through without destroying it at some point. So I started over again. I could spend weeks working on the painting or the drawing. And I'd come in the house and look at my wife said, blew another one. And, but I'm going to do the next one better. So that's the attitude to have. And the attitude for failure is all around us. One of the films I like to show my kids is the bridge that goes like this out West. Yeah. And that's an engineering failure where they didn't do the testing well enough, or they didn't think all the problems out before it happened. Uh, before they put it up. But like with SpaceX, I've shown them a lot of these rockets that explode. And when they're trying to land, whatever they're with SpaceX, they're trying to do. And then when they succeed, it's excellent because they learned a lot from the failures. A lot of engineers I know, uh, they want things to fail because that's the way they learn. They can push it to its stress. You know, part of their job sometimes many times is to push things until they break. And so what I've, what I've done is I've got a short um, PowerPoint to show you, which I showed last year with, with Jake, and I've made some changes to it. Um, and it's going into what I've done with my kids. And let me, back up the story. The thing that Jake called me about was a, an opportunity, a company by the name of Parallax asked us or asked him if he knew any, or he went to them and offered to set up doing robotics and circuitry with kids. And when I said yes to Jake, I knew nothing about it. So I was, I told the kids right off the bat, I started working on it about two weeks before and they did. So they knew that I didn't know much and I was learning with them and I shared my failures with them. They shared theirs. They didn't get upset. Um, let me go ahead and start this, this short PowerPoint. Do you know how to share the PowerPoint? The screen? You got it? No. no you didn't get it's, it. a, it's a green box at the bottom. It says share. There's an arrow pointing up. Oh, there it is. I, I've been using, 
it's been a while since I've shared anything on Zoom. I've been using Google uh, Meet in the classroom. Ah, now we see it. Oh, you see the PowerPoint? Yep. Yes. Okay. Oh, we went, we went ahead one. Okay, it's basically about circuits and this right here is a little screen that I got a hold of. I taught the kids some basic stuff and then basically threw them into the deep end. There's some thought about that, uh, whether or not that's a good thing to do. I've read journal papers on it's not good just to throw kids out there or it's good to throw kids out there concerning science. Um, and my, my attitude about this whole thing is it's somewhere in the middle. It depends on the age group. Some kids you can, and it depends on the kids. So we're gonna start off with failing, then building blocks, organizations, and create. So these are some of the steps I use when I'm starting new projects in my classroom. <clears throat> you can see the NGS stuff here in the back. I got that uh, off of Don't Kill the Wonder, which is a great website. Failing is okay. and. I, what really amazed me was that a lot of people were talking about this. I was so happy to hear it today when I was listening to all the presentations. Um, failing is the first attempt in learning. So I started, I use this as a cultural thing, especially after uh, talking with Jake last year. And I started this whole project with the fifth grade, which was primarily with the parallax and the circuitry, which is meant for upper grades and high school students. And the company actually didn't think that the fifth graders could do it. And they just surprised me. But we first started with the first attempt in learning and they took this under their wings and they went around the school, they made posters and hung them up all over the school. And then they were making posters to send home with their parents who taught in other school systems. And then we heard from some teachers from other schools and we put some posters together for them. So going underneath that philosophy, then I would do a short, during a lot of these, I'd do this maybe one day a class, one day a week or twice a week I'd do it. And what these, so I'm showing them a basic circuit. You can see their parallax on the table here. I hid their, this is the way they actually look with these little bubbles on them. Uh, this is a video, which we're not going to watch, uh, of breadboards. But this, you can get an idea of type of the stuff that these kids had to wade through. And they started wading through it. We went through the website, we figured out the website, I didn't want that either. And then the other th next thing I'm just going to jump ahead is organization. As with me, I am not organized unless I put my mind to it. So we, we came up with a deal with the fifth graders. We came up with the way we're going to be organized. They do all their work. All the pieces always stay on a white sheet of paper. They're going to bag everything that they're going to use. They put everything else in the box, in the wire. So they get organized this way and Petri dish for the parts that they're using at that moment. This way we didn't lose it. And we came up with a policy that if they lost it and someone else found it, they owned it. So they could add it to their projects. So you could see one of the kids working here with the flip and they're learning how to wire. It's at basically this point that I step back. They're starting to do some electrical drawings here. They're, they're writing out their code down here. This is a couple of kids that are, she's looking on the computer and I, they worked in pairs, two to three kids per group. And they were figuring out how to put push buttons and to make those push buttons work, which I had nothing to do with. They were doing all the figuring 
they were not to come to me first, they were to go to other groups. If another group had got something running and they were having problems, then they would share that. I'm going to share a very short video showing how these, some of these kids work together when they, get in, when they got into the robotics end of it. So these pictures are just the breadboard, how they did the wiring. They're pretty neat with it. They double check everything. They've got everything hooked up to their computers. This is the box that everything came in. So you can see they figured out that wiring all on their own. Um, the directions only went into three of the lights. The kids kept wanting to add more and more and more to the lights like with this one, which I have to be careful because I tried cutting that face out and I couldn't do it. So you can see the lights are getting longer and longer and I'm gonna show you a board that I brought home with me. But they figured out all on their own. How to make these things blink at different speeds. How to do the wiring. How to write the code. There we go. Let me go back space. Uh, we also had fun. We put a movie together of Addison's thing. Wait, let's watch because our lights don't work. So you can see now they've got the push buttons hooked up to the lights. They have a piezo beep, which is a small speaker. And they're, what they have to do here is that they had to figure out how to get two pieces of code to work together, actually three pieces of code to work together. I was learning from them at this point and they were helping me do my stuff. And this is a quote that came out of it. Fundamentally, the ability to read inputs and outputs is really all you need to operate anything from a toaster to a nuclear aircraft carrier. The world and the future is now under their control, Jake Mendelson. So you can see some of their code that here. That was when I was with the Henry Ford. And Right, I, I tried, I tried, I didn't have time I didn't want to embed the video from it and change it all over again and then put the video back in because when I start doing that, things start to fall apart. So I tried to kill it before it got too high. Uh, this is a simple code. This is the simple lights. This is when they were just starting out. So you can see how they advanced. Now their code's getting a little bit Tim? Yes. Yes. This is my code. I was planning on doing the OLED with my partners. So I decided to. Tim? What? Tim? Tim, what? we're, we're going to have to cut yes. this little show. I'm terribly sorry. But we have to stay on schedule. Judy has a stopwatch and an axe, and okay. I'm afraid of her. But, but, but here, here's well, the story. We're going to have Not another presentation in July. All, but... and we, 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 can we you are invite well, your kids? You. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, uh, maybe you can even bring a student or two with you. Yes, I, I'm, I'm working. Yes. I'm working with a couple of my kids right now. And I have a couple kids that want to do it. So we'll get them to do it. I'm sorry, Julie, about running over. Great. Great. You're okay, we'll and I don't have an axe. I'll, I'll finish up in July. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. But All I'm right. still afraid of her. Thank you, Tim. We, we, will do, we will finish this in July. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, it's okay. Okay, Thanks. very good. Take care. <laughs>